As a small business owner, you often have your fair share of challenges. You may even feel you're the only one. But what if you could be connected with another small business facing similar challenges? Well, QuickBooks have done that with the Quick Round with QuickBooks Challenge. Two small business owners in the same room facing similar challenges, finding solutions and even giving each other advice. So let's find out what happened in today's Quick Round with QuickBooks Challenge. I'm Emily Stockton of Shift Consulting. We offer tailored content solutions, both for large corporates and smaller consumer-facing companies. Our web address is www.shiftconsulting.co.za. My name is Jennifer Morrison. I'm from Junior Jive Music and Movement Program for preschoolers. Junior Jive is a music and movement program specializing in taking the two things that children just love to do, music and movement, and using them as tools for their perceptual skills, their listening skills, their gross motor and fine motor skills. Our website is www.juniorjive.co.za. Ladies, welcome to the Quick Round with QuickBooks Challenge. Uh, it's your edition today, your episode, totally dedicated to your challenges, um, which I guess we could sum up as both being staff related. Emily, perhaps you could paint a quick picture for us of Shift Consulting and what your particular challenge is at the moment. Sure, so Shift Consulting is a tailored content solutions company. What we do is we ensure that messages land authentically, whether it's training, corporate communications, um, consumer-facing PR, um, anything from stakeholder engagements to advertising and, and creating advertisements, um, anything that needs to be communicated. Now that sounds quite straightforward, except that what I do specifically is quite niched. So I have experience in the drinks industry specifically, and then where I'm finding the most demand is um, based on my experience in the rest of Africa. Now. I'm not sure how to scale my business and keep up with the demand when my skill set is so niched. And while I realize I could train other people up to help me, A, my time is very limited in terms of being able to train people, and B, I'm nervous that I'm going to spend all this time and investment in training them and then they leave. Okay, so very clear challenge there. Willing to train, willing to upskill, worried that people will leave. Jenny, you've been around uh, in business for some six years or yes. so with Junior Jive. Paint a quick picture for us, but you've got 14 staff members, so I'm sure you could pass on quite a bit to Emily. Before we get there though, what is, what is it that's on your mind from a Junior Jive perspective? Um, I have a specific challenge also with people, with my team. In our small business environment and also in the financial challenges that we have in our economy mm. at the moment, at the back of my mind I'm always wondering, am I giving my staff enough? Am I giving my team enough? Because for me, I want to give them as much as I can, but as every small business owner knows, you only have so much to give. <laughs> so that is my challenge, is where do I motivate them without giving them the big perks like big companies have? When, when you talk about perks, though, um, there's the monetary side of things and the monetary reward to staff versus other things. And Emily, if I'm hearing correctly or interpreting correctly, it seems to me that you're aware that even if you were to bring someone in and you could upskill them and share some of your knowledge to deal with the growing base of clients, you know you could remunerate them well, but you know also that that may not necessarily be enough to keep them. Well, that's a huge challenge. Um, I work with some fantastic companies and, and big brand names, so I know that people are attracted to that. That is why someone would want to come and work, work with me. I know that. The, the challenge I have is when I transfer my relationship, because that's essentially what I'm going to need mm -hmm. to do, um, and kind of hand over the reins to somebody else to then engage with my clients, I need to know that those people are A, going to stay with me for a while, because I can't be introducing somebody new every second week, and B, that once the glam and the, the excitement over who these clients are wears off and the real work um, sort of kicks in, that they're going to stick it out and then see that they're not going to look at it and go, well, you know what, I could be doing a lot less 
and earning a lot more if I worked at a big corporate. So I really need to find someone that doesn't want to be a cog in a corporate machine and that really wants to get their hands dirty, get involved, make the relationships and really work hard and who finds fulfillment from that. You're at a very early stage in the life cycle of a business. You're just coming out of that startup stage. Some would argue you're probably still in the startup stage. So you clearly have a risk appetite because taking on a staff overhead um, is, is quite a responsibility. When you started out, Jennifer, how did you tackle that? How did you deal with the sense of, well, I'm going to upskill someone, I'm going to entrust them with representing my business and my brand, and how, how have you managed to keep a team of 14 people around and you've been around for six years? What can you share with them? Um, it is risky and you're right. As an entrepreneur, I think any risk we take in people is a risk. Mm. And I think the idea that I thought I could do was just invest in people mm. and trust them because that's all you can do. You can trust them and you can instill that sense of this is my passion. Do you want to come alongside me and have that passion with me and see a sense of something more than myself? So in my business, we focus on the children and we focus on educating the children as our core value. Something that holds you together. Yes. yes. So, so that would mean then that you're saying to Emily, look for a particular type of person. Yes as opposed to the skill set, because skills can be imparted? Yes, absolutely. Does that resonate definitely. at all, Emily? Does it, it give you a greater does. chance of hanging on to that, to that person? <laughs> it absolutely does. And the other thing is, I mean, I would never want to hang on to someone and hold someone back. Um, throughout my working life, I've always invested heavily in the people that I've worked with. And so even when I was a manager of a team of people, um, we always all worked well together. So I'm not too concerned about, about that, but it's finding that person. That's the biggest challenge because, again, you know, you'll only really see what they're like once they're actually operating in the space. Yes. But if I understand your model correctly, um, you do put together teams of specialists and experts in different yes. areas of business to deliver to the client. I do. There, there could possibly be that kind of person sitting in that team, people that you have worked with, so that you get to know them, you get to get a feel for whether you resonate and gel before you actually approach that person to be the person that, that essentially you're asking to come in and share in what you do every day. I mean, have you considered that as a route to take? I have, and I consistently have my eye out wherever I'm going. <laughs> so, so, yes, I've... I've got my ear to the, the ground and I do, I have put the word out to let people know that there are these opportunities coming up. I guess people also would need to be as kind of open to taking a bit of a risk as I have been. I mean, I've, I've left two big corporates to come and do what I'm doing now and it is incredibly risky and nerve wracking. And yes, I also had a bond when I started and no, I didn't not need to work because I'm married, which is I think what people sometimes assume. So I guess somebody would have to want to, to have this lifestyle more than the security of having a salary. And I think that's something that I could market and offer. What about this, this aspect, and we often hear this spoken about, but you're at an early stage in the business. You've been around more years, Jenny, and you may have considered this at some stage as well, because really what it boils down to in terms of both of the issues on your minds is motivating staff in a yes. tough economic climate, being a small mm. business, so it's not necessarily about that monetary incentive. Um, but have you considered uh, some kind of uh, incentivization in terms of a commission or finder's fee on new business coming in? Uh, Jenny, for example, let's just stop for a minute with yes. Junior Jive. Uh, I, I'm aware that you will offer a discount to a parent who perhaps yes. uh, puts both children. So there's a sibling discount. You, yes. you get the money up front at the beginning of a term, ideally, from yes. a parent for their children to attend the classes. So you know how much money is sitting in that kitty. Uh, would you possibly look at the value of that discount being some kind of monetary incentive to teachers because you were willing to part for it, from it 
on your turnover anyway. Yes, that's a brilliant way of doing it. I think that would really Would that work. be something yes, to consider? absolutely. Would you have an appetite at this stage, Emily, or do you think it's too early in the life cycle of the business to offer some kind of monetary incentive, but link it to getting more business in? Well, I've been so fortunate. My, my biggest challenge is not getting business in. My biggest challenge is... Servicing the business. Keeping up with the demand. <laughs> yes. So... So I'm actually at a point now where I'm going to start turning clients away, which nobody in their right mind wants to do, but I certainly won't take on someone that I cannot give you know, my absolute best to. So I think my, my plan or what I'm, what I'm thinking along the lines of doing is looking out for someone with a view to that person getting shares in my business. Right, which would have been the next point, some kind of J, maybe you start, perhaps you start as a joint venture? Exactly. Yes. Collaboratively? Sure. That, that's what I was going to mention to you. That's what mm -hmm. we do at Junior Jive. We have a system where the teachers are able to be incentivized when they bring in new clients, like you mentioned, and then later on they can become part of the business. So they, we have a, a kind of a franchising kind of system. I was about to when, ask. And that when a person has the skills and the right attitudes, they can then come on as a business owner themselves and have their own clients underneath. So that would be some way of sharing that kind of business and then dividing the clients up. So you don't have to do it all yourself because sure. that is really difficult. You mentioned the franchising type of model. Is it a franchise model? Because that would have been my next port of call question wise would be to say, well, have you considered a franchise type of model where there's that sense of ownership from people whom you employ? Yes, I have four. I call them licensees because they get a license from Junior Jive to run the brand and the model of Junior Jive in their own little business. So that's how I run it. Is there, is there some way in which, I mean, it would be quite innovative, I guess, in, in your particular line of it work where it's a service uh, delivery and you're working with, you know, it's your IPN experience that is really what you have to offer the client. But sure. there might be something there that might be worth considering in terms of some they vested may. interest. Look, I think that because it's so niched and there are only so, there are so few of us that have the experience that I have, we actually do collaborate. There are a network of us that we're all consultants. Most of us, we all have the same problem. Um, so we have started collaborating more recently and a year ago there was a lot of resistance to, you know, have you got a contact for this? And, and you could see the person had the contact but they weren't going to give it to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, as lovely as these people are, they just weren't. And so I took the plunge actually. I, I literally said, here we go guys, these are the contacts I have, let's swap. Mm. And it worked like it worked incredibly. None of us has the time to source contacts or find suppliers and, and go through all of the administrative tasks that that, that um, sort of demands. So just because I shared, everybody else shared too. And as a, the industry as a whole obviously benefits from it. And, and no one's going to steal each other's clients. I think everybody's finally realized that. And that, that. doesn't seem to be what your concern is. No. Your concern is really bringing someone in upskilling them and they leave one day, which is a reality I guess yeah. all small businesses yes. have to face. Um, you said something earlier, Jennifer, which I'd like to pick up on, on Emily's particular challenge, and that was really about perhaps you're looking for a certain type of person um, and your ability to sketch some kind of vision and passion for, for that, and perhaps we could talk a little bit about that. I have a quite a stringent interview process that I do. It can be quite lengthy, but I believe that because of that, I can sift people and look more at their character and look at what I'm really looking for. Because your normal interviews are, you know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, all those kind of things. And people know how to answer those things. But when you start asking character questions and when you ask sort of questions that are based on a specific scenario, then you actually get the idea of how they would grapple with a dilemma and then you can sort of suss out whether they are able to assess the situation and have the strength of character to stand up and be the person that you want them to be. Does that resonate in terms of perhaps a different approach to how you find this person in the first place, Emily? It does, it does. I don't think I would ever be able to advertise and interview. I think, to your point earlier, I'm going to have to 
um, keep an eye out, approach people, and then almost start the, those that kind process. of character, yeah, mm -hmm. a bit character of a character evaluation. analysis. Yeah, yes. I mean, it sounds terrible, but it, it does. It, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, you you either are that kind of person That's or you're it. not. And yes. I mean, you know, I've, I've never considered myself an entrepreneur, and now I am one. But I'm realizing more and more that there are certain types of people that can survive and thrive in this space. And there's certain kinds of people that just won't. And it's not an indictment on someone's No, but you need to be finding the like but type yes. of person to exactly. bring into your environment. Like-minded, that's yes. key. Jenny, let's, let's go back to Junior Giants Challenge just for a second, because something that occurred to me, I, I did go and take a look at the website, and you talk about educators, the specialized people, skilled people, um, who, who are literally the, the, the front-facing part of your business. They yes. are interfacing with your yes. clients every day. Have you thought about perhaps creating a profile for each of these teachers on the website as well so they're not faceless, um, which then almost positions them to be marketing your business and brand at the same time, which helps to grow the business and could be seen as some form of perk from their perspective? Thank you. That's a lovely idea. I definitely think that we will work on that. Thank you. Emily, uh, I know we haven't been able to solve your challenge. The reality is you probably will lose staff in the course of running your own business. <laughs> yes, I'm sure I have. Jenny will <laughs> confirm that. No, I confirm Jenny. Yes, she can help, help, yes, get, help me get over the emotional Have we at least loss. been able to give you a pointer in terms of uh, don't get hooked on the skills, find the right person personality-wise, and you've got a greater chance of hanging on to them? Certainly, I've, I've, I will definitely be focused on looking at people with the right attributes and the right character tray more than the, the qualifications and the pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. Emily, we wish you all the best with the Shift Consulting. Thanks. Jenny, we wish you all the best Thank with you. Junior Jive. We hope you'll j we j you jive your way into Absolutely. the next <laughs> six years or so. Yeah. Um, we hope to have you back in six years' time and find out how your business has done, Emily, and Absolutely. how you've grown and who's on your team. Thanks very much, ladies. Thanks, Thanks so you. much. Thank you for having us. That brings us to the end of this edition of the Quick Round with QuickBooks Challenge. Of course, our topic and theme for today was staffing related. How do you motivate staff in a tough economic environment when you don't necessarily, as a small business, have the resources to make that incentivization monetary? There are other things you can do by way of perks, and very often that relates to having people that have a certain type of attribute and characteristic um, whom you know will not just be looking at the RAND value of that paycheck at the end of the month.